I thought we MIC has been around for 10 years. It feels like it because it's because I thought MIC has been around for 10 years because I've been doing this for so long um, before even MIC, right? Helping people and everything. So this is just an extension of us doing it. And so, yeah, August 17th is our two year anniversary, guys. Two year anniversary. What does that mean? It means that, hey, we're going to throw a giant event. And unfortunately, with the corona, we can't do it live, guys. We would love to do it live. There's a chance we meet everybody. You know how much we love doing meetups, man. We started the whole meetup thing. No one did meetups before we did it. And we did it regularly, not just to try to sell you stuff, right? We genuinely like to meet people because we have nothing to hide. We want to help people. So unfortunately, we can't do that. So we are going to stream it. Probably gonna use Zoom. It's gonna be August 17, guys. I don't know exactly which day. Tosh can type that out. And uh, I'm gonna give you a sneak preview. So we're like, dude, what, how much should we charge for this? Obviously, it can't be free because you know no one values free stuff, right? But I don't wanna turn it into a giant money event that you try to you know milk people. So. What we did was, as usual, guys, we already told you, if you're a lifetime member, you get in for free. So you're in for free. If you're an annual member now, you get in for free. Now you're in for free. And if you're not, if you're not, I think we settled on a ridiculous price, guys. $99. That's all it's going to cost you to, to attend this live trading. Probably going to be six to eight hours. I don't know how long we're going to do it. At least six hours. From way early in the morning, we're talking about the process. We're going to teach you everything the MSC does. 99 bucks, guys. August 17. This is going to be first come, first serve because there's a maximum audience number for Zoom. Cannot be a thousand people because Zoom will break. We, I hope so. We haven't done that yet. but So it's going to be first come, first serve. We are going to release it. I think next week, right, Alex? We're still working on the details. But if you are an annual or lifetime, you are guaranteed a spot. We are pricing ridiculously cheap. $99, dude. This is so that everybody can join. Everybody can learn. You know what? So we said, you know what, man? We're going to give back as an anniversary thing. It's, it's, it's us giving back just like the first time we did it we the last year we did it in Philadelphia dude it cost us over six figures dude and we did it for free we didn't charge last year and the venue cost us over six figures we gave free food free event we hosted free drinks jeez man we, we it, this, this was well over six figures we gave last year for free you know who would do that right guys I see these guys charging like five hundred dollars for and then five thousand dollars to meet them. I mean, it's ridiculous shit. And quick rent, quick rent, guys. This is what pisses me and Alex off, and Tosh off, and all the members, and all the mods. We are very nice people, man. We 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 care about people way too much, and I think that's what people take advantage of it sometimes. It's like I don't want to get into the details, but it's like, dude, these other services don't give a fuck what you do they come into their chat room at 9 20 in the morning and start pumping out shit they can give a shit if you learn or not their goal is to get memberships to get sheep to replace the old sheep that die they have zero retention because no one's learning shit so they spend millions of dollars on advertising because Dude, you chase shit, you're gonna die. Once in a while they make money, sure, everyone makes money, but the majority of the people do not make money. They lose money. There is no process, there's no teaching, there's no nothing. The guru themselves are, are inside MIC. I know this because they're learning our process, they're speaking the same language that we created, and it's okay. But what I really hate is the fact that all most of the guys that come in MIC, it's like, oh, I can't afford it. What can you afford? Two hundred dollars? Yeah, because I spent seven thousand dollars on this program last year. It's for one year, seven thousand dollars. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? 
And, and so it's kind of like, dude, it seems like we are too fucking nice. And so me and Alex got really upset the other day. But we're going to do about, right? What are we going to do about? We're going to change the way we are. So we said, you know what, man? It is what it is. It's karma. We were living a great life. And fuck these guys. Let them keep doing what they're doing. Karma's going to get them. And we're going to continue what we're doing. And look at today. Today I took a nice loss. And it sucks, dude. And I'm still here helping you guys. Talking about my loss. Posting about my loss. You really think I want to talk about it? I got so many private messages after I posted my loss. Some of the people are very nice. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. And other people are just like, oh, why'd you make that trade? You know, like, I'm like, dude, it's a bad trade. What can you say? So we'll start off with that, guys. We're going to start off with what the fuck did I do today? My problem was this, guys. I was very eager to trade and I saw the setup. MTP. MTP. And this is a dollar off of the high. And in the morning, I woke up very early. I, I, I tweeted, I wake up around 4 a.m. Okay? Fucking shit. I think I wake up at 3.38 a.m. Holy crap. So that's how, that's when I get up. I get up when some people go to sleep, right? 3.30, 3.48 a.m. or some crap like that. I wake up 4 a.m. basically. California time. And we are there helping people. Alex is there before me. Two hours before me. Because he's on the East Coast. So we, we are there 24 hours a day. You'll see me answering questions at 11 o'clock my time. At, which is basically 2 a.m. market time. We have a 24-hour... This is our life. The reason we do this is because we love it. We want to help people. So much easier shit I could do than this, guys. Trust me, man. I don't, I don't need this headache. It's like, dude, we are not making much money. People think we're making much money. We're not making money. All the money goes back right to the, you know, I don't want to talk about that thing, but, you know, you, you, you see, it's like we, we really want to help people, right? And so, so today, what the hell happened? Today, I was like very eager. You know what the problem was, man? I came in very stubborn. I was like, MTP is it. MTP and NBEV. Those were my two stocks that I was going to load the crap out of. And I was pretty damn sure it's going to work. And it did work. In the morning, it went up. It went down. You know, I scalped 30 cents on some size. I, I was up. You know, so I felt good. And then, this is my mistake, guys. Nothing is guaranteed. I keep telling everybody right now. Even if you have a 20 blackjack hand, 21 will beat you. There is no 21 hands in trading. You will always be able to get beaten. You could call it black swan, blue moon, what the hell you want to call it. But I see a black swan every single week I walk by this pond, dude. Black duck, black swan, you call it. But my problem is this, dude. So this is the thing that you got to be careful about. I love to talk about my losses because I want you guys to learn from them so you don't repeat the same stupidity I do. I am not a perfect trader. I am freaking human. My technical skills are very good. But my mental, my mental discipline... It's not all there sometimes, guys. You know, so yesterday I went to sleep at midnight. I only had three and a half hours of sleep. It's just, you know, but I love it. I wake up and I still help the people. My problem was this. I wanted to bank so bad. I should have, that should have been the sign. I was like, dude, I'm going to nail this guy. I'm going to max the fuck out of this size because it was a dollar down. But the problem was this. Usually I have my laptop, which has all of the chat room streamers up. And I know who's in what stock. Today, I was really lazy, guys. I didn't set up my laptop because I, I only have three and a half hours of sleep. And I didn't think anybody would hit MTP. The stock was trading at what? Jesus, $3 this morning. Three bucks. Over a dollar off of the highs. This stock was dead. It was about to breach the death line. Completely dead. And then all of a sudden, I saw a huge surge of volume. I didn't know why. Then I'm like, oh, fuck. So I pull out my laptop. And then I find out that it's a chat room guy. That has 10,000 guys watching him live. Copying every single bad trade that he does. He single-handedly took that stock from 3 bucks to, geez, man, $6 himself. 
This is if if that guy was not in it, there's no way it would have went there because this this dog's dead. So many bag holders. But like I said, even a 20 blackjack hand gets beat. And so my problem was I did not I deviate from my process once again. So if you if you lose guys, go and backtrack and backstep your what you did, and you're gonna realize you did something wrong. You deviated from your process. My process involves making damn sure that I do not step into a landmine. And a landmine these days is a chat room pump. I don't give a damn if this stock is the worst stock in the world. It should go down. It's way under Vigo up, whatever the reason may be. But when you have 10,000 guys, each of those guys buying a few thousand shares of stock, and it's a cheap stock, you end up with $50 million, million dollars worth of volume. And that's exactly what happened, guys. You just cannot fight it. And by then, it was just too late. I was already oversized. So that was another deviation. I broke the 30-70 rule, where I'm supposed to only size in 30% on the front side and then add on the confirmation. I was so eager because I'm like, dude, this stock, I want this stock to go up so bad. And when it went back up, I started just a, just a size up way too fast. So I deviated from my process. And I didn't have my laptop out. I didn't know who was pumping this thing. By the time that happened, I was already stuck. And when I'm stuck, I'm like, holy crap. I added it to a loser. Deviation from the process once again. You know, it's a very stupid mistake, guys, but this happens, you know. So the learning thing is this, guys. I had a max loss set on the broker level. When it broke that max loss, I could not add any more damage. I could only cover. So what I did was I couldn't add any more on that, that account, which saved me, man. The stock is what now? Seven bucks, whatever. If I added, I would I would have probably lost fifty thousand dollars on that stock. Easily. I would have easily lost fifty thousand bucks on that stock. I would have wiped out a ton of money. And then I would have pulled out more accounts. And who knows? You know, this, this so basically having this fence protects me from myself. And these are the things that we talk about in MIC. These are things that we as the leader must obey because we're teaching this thing and then when i see other gurus talk about they're down half a million dollars and then that's yeah, okay i have a lot of money i'm like it's not okay it's fucking not okay because you know what man you're a good trader you can trade yourself but if you are an educator your students your members are looking to copy whatever the fuck you're doing and if you are breaking rules if you're being an arrogant prick if, if risk management doesn't mean shit to you and you you are breaking every single rule revenge trading what's gonna happen sure you got fucking enough money you're a good trader you got money you can get out of the hole but you will bankrupt most of your members your members are not at your level you need to be the role model i don't want to get into it but maybe this is the new society where role models are could be assholes now I don't want to get into politics, but you see what I'm saying? I come from an old society where, you know, you try to do good. You try to, you know, be a good human being. But, and, and, but, but this new generation of people is just so selfish, man. I, I just can't get it. And it kind of pisses me off and Alex off and all that stuff. But it's like, man, where's your fucking risk management, man? Where the fuck? I don't give a fuck about you, to be honest. I don't give a fuck about the gurus, the gurus. I give a fuck about the members who it's going to blow up. And then what, you know what happened? I got a bunch of PM today. They came to my room. They came to MIC and said, dude, this motherfucker is not teaching anybody. He's just bragging. He comes in at 920, fucking pump, pump, pump. He don't, people don't throw shit. It, so I don't want to name names. We should not name any names. It's just an example because there's a lot of people out there like this. They are in it for their own gain. They get on the microphone, have a thousand people in the chat room, pumping shit. Of course they're gonna make money. You got a fucking bunch of sheep following you. If you take a look at it, this, this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. If you wanna know how good of a trader someone is, look at them trading without an audience, without sheep. Can any of these motherfuckers trade without sheep? Fuck no. Where were they before they got a chat room? Where before did it before they had a microphone? They weren't doing shit. I specifically do not pump 
and I make sure Alex don't pump. I make sure no one pumps in the room because we want you to learn, guys. We're not here just to fucking pump shit up. And it pisses me off, guys. I'm so sorry. It pisses me off when when these guys are doing it, getting away with it, making money for. I don't give a fuck about them making money for themselves. We make money too. It's not like I haven't fucking made more than all these motherfuckers, right? But I don't brag about it. And I don't certainly pump people to do it. I made money quietly. One day, I make the money, I post my shit. People, what the fuck? They didn't even know I was in. That's, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's, that's what it is. But I'm really pissed because I get emails from people crying that they lost money. And they're begging me for a discount at MIC. I'm like, how about I give you a $200? It's $2 a month, guys. How much more discount do you want? You pay $7,000 for this guy or whatever it may be, right? I'm just making it up, right? And now you lost all your money. I should have went to you guys. Yeah, you should have fucking went to us because you know what, man? Most of these guys are trying to get rich quick. And that's what happens, guys. When you try to chase these guys, trying to get rich quick, being lazy, this is what happens. Sure, some people make money, but the majority of you will go broke. Okay, the majority of you will go broke. Okay, I, I, that's all I want to say. <laughs> I had this big rant coming like that. I need to get off my chest because I got emails today from people. I posted one of them emails up. And it's just, it's just very sad, man. And like for me, man, I, I took a loss today. It's nothing. This is like, dude, I, I, I'll make it back. It's not a big deal. I, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is nothing. But, but, but imagine if I were... So today's loss, you know, I didn't post in the room, meaning like I didn't post my place in the room. I don't want people to follow me. I broke the rules. I shorted the front side. I posted my chart. You guys saw that chart. I could have gone out at 450. I thought I was going to go down. The next, you know, it teleported from 450 to six something. That was the, the game over. Fucking uh, check out, check Twitter, guys, and you'll see it. So it's not like I didn't, you know, I shorted the fucking $4 line. I went all into the $4 line. A max size of the four dollar line, which was the high from pre market. I did not expect it to rip up to six bucks. No one did. It teleported. But when it broke four bucks, I was like, "Oh fuck! I'm going to cover for a loss." And that's why I did four fifty. But I didn't cover enough. I covered half, and I covered the fucking half at six, and that, and I'm done. Um, but with that in mind, so any questions right now? Quick questions on my MPT trade. Which is, you know, man, it's shit happens. I my mistake was deviating from the process, thinking that I'm gonna bank on it, and had this notion in my head already. I am going to not get faked out. They're gonna fake me out because you know what, man, all these other stocks died the past week. They went up and they went down. And so I was like, okay, it's gonna be the same. Nope, kept on fucking going up. What's MTP at right now, guys? Zombie hour came and it fucking killed the next set of guys that were stubborn. Went from 480 to seven bucks when I was putting on my shoe. What's MTP got? See? So shit happens, guys. You this is trading, man. When you deviate from your process, this is this is what happens. 581. Wow, went all the way back down. You know what? Now people want to get in. It's gonna go back to seven bucks. Who the fuck knows, right? But the point is, when shit happens, how do you mitigate your risk? So I want to talk that before we, we uh, do the uh, Q&A. How do you mitigate your risk? Because shit's going to happen, guys. When things go perfectly well, everyone's happy. But the problem is these one-off things is going to kill you unless you mitigate your risk. And this is the one thing that these guru fools do not teach people. They tell you to keep buying, 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 adding, adding, adding. If you doubt, keep adding. The fuck? Stock was at two dollars. You tell people buy six bucks. What the fuck? And it goes up ten cents, and you fucking take the fucking ten cents, and you stick everybody with the loss. It's fucked up shit, right? You are the guy that's supposed to be the leader, but you're the guy pumping. But it's okay. I'm not the fucking authority. I'm. People do what they do, man. All I can do is educate you so that you don't get fall for the trap, guys. So what do you do? You make it risk. I'm gonna tell you right now. Call your fucking broker. Set up a max daily loss. That is what saves everybody in MIC. That and hard stops. Hard stops, people do not put them down sometimes. But you know what, man? At least if you are walking, I compare day trading, guys, 
to walking a tightrope between two buildings. Don't you want a safety net? What is your safety net? I want a fucking safety net. I want a harness. I want to put all of those on. If you do not have the proper fucking safety equipment, you will die. You may be able to walk through that thing 100 out of 101 times. The hundred first time you fall, you will die. Hard stops, but most important, in my opinion, set up your max daily loss, guys. Cannot explain it anymore. The only reason I did not lose more is because I could not. The broker locked that account out. Couldn't add to a fucking loser anymore. If I did, I'd fucking double my loss easily, easily, triple my loss. Because I've done it in the past. Before I knew about this broker max loss rule, right? Just things like this, guys. So the first thing we teach people, okay, I'll tell you, I'm gonna, this will be the last thing. The first thing you learn when you take like martial arts is not to punch, it's not to kick, it's how to take a punch, how to fall, like in judo, how to fall properly without breaking your neck. You first end up when you take judo class and all that, you do not do throws. You do fucking falls. You start first by falling, learning how to fall properly without breaking your neck. That's called risk management. And that's what I want you guys as a takeaway tonight, to go and set up your risk management. See where you lost and how you can improve on this risk management. This is where rules come from. So my new rule is this, guys. I am not going to short any more of these low floats bullshit day one that any of these chat, that those chat room guys are pumping. I'm going to wait until they're out, and then the top is formed and I'll short. I had no business shorting this shit. The problem I had was I deviated from my process. I didn't turn on my laptop. I didn't even hear that he came in to pump it. Because if I'd heard it, I would not be in it. I avoided all this crap most of the time. Today, I did not have it on. So basically... I need to have the rule now. The rule is, you know what, man? You have to set up all your safety equipment. You have to do all this stuff before you trade. You cannot, you cannot be lazy. You cannot skip the process, things like that. So I want you guys as an exercise, go home and do proper risk management. Learn how to fall properly while breaking your neck. Okay, so I want to bring up, bring over two way. This is the first time I talked to him live. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, what's up, Modern Rock? How you doing, pal? <laughs> I'm glad I finally meet you. Yeah, absolutely, man. Been, uh, so, uh, what, did, 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 I I kind of rambled on this morning because I my brain, you know, like you you're in the chat room, you uh you, you see me take a loss, so I my my brain's a little scrambled. So I hope I made a little sense this morning when I talked about all this stuff. Right, absolutely. You know, it's like the cool thing about you is just like it's rep, you know, just repetition. You say it over and over and over again. Eventually, it will stick. So, you know, what you were t saying today as far as sitting on the max loss and then that safety net, you know, I've heard it before, but now sitting in action with MTP and, and, and myself going through it, it's like, what am I doing? Where is my, my safety net? So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like watching these videos and seeing it and hearing it over again, eventualistic because I can be a little stubborn. We all are. So, so before we forget, tell everybody your name and all that good stuff. Your background, right. where you're from. Right. <laughs> so uh, I go by two-way trader, right? Um, I'm kind of like the, the head memer. That's quote-unquote head memer in, in the group, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, my name, just for the memes. Just for, yeah, just for the memes. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I did. But, uh, yeah, so my name is Nelly. That's my real name here. And um, But, you know, I, I kind of put myself as I'm not a new trader, right? But I'm more of like a born-again trader. OK, so what I mean by that is I've been trading off and on for the past five years, uh, but I started just like everybody else. I think at least I feel like uh, starting with those gurus, gurus, whatever. Right. And um, trade it the wrong way. But here's what I can say. I thank them because that's how I found you, uh, Bao, and that's how I found Alex, and that's how I found Tosh is through them and found the right way to do it. So once I saw through you, so you uh, saw it through Twitter. And I saw MIC in this opportunity. That's when I wanted to get back, you know, back into trading all over again. And here's what I can tell you when I came into it is I had to relearn everything from scratch. Like I unlearned everything that I learned from them. You know, stop chasing the breakout, stop chasing all the different things and following alerts. Start from scratch. I went through the accelerator and acted like if I was a new trader. 
And I've been with MIC since uh, the beginning of this year, like March timeframe. And I, I can tell you about, this is the first time ever that I felt that I'm, I'm actually know what I'm doing. And I had that aha moment recently, like this is something I can truly do as a full-time trader now. So thanks so, to you so, and everybody. So what did you do differently? What did you unlearn specifically? And what did you learn the right way? Right, right. So, yeah. right. so first thing is, is stop uh, following anybody's alerts, right? So uh, first thing I came in, I started looking at the watch list and trying to be like you, be like Alex. And that was the, that was the wrong thing to do is, is really learn about what's good about you and everybody else and take the best and incorporate it into my process. And now every morning, you know, I get up, I'm in the East Coast, I get up at 4.30 and I have a process for, from the beginning, like A to Z, what does it look like before the opening bell? And then I compare my notes, compare my watches to you and everybody else to see, am I seeing the right thing? But as when the, the opening bell starts, I'm trading my own. I am doing my own thing. I am not following anybody else. So that, that's probably the key thing is really not following, not trying to be like you or anybody else, but find my own identity as a trader. So you, be, you learn to become self-sufficient. That's the moral Absolutely. of the story that we did. And that, I love it. And it comes from the fact, the thing is this, guys. There's, alerts are good if you know how to use it right. Alerts are like watch lists and all that. It doesn't mean blindly follow the watch list. It means, you know what, this is a blueprint, a guide. Absolutely. And so, and so it's kind of like when you're taking engineering classes and you want to build, let's say, a bridge. You're not going to copy the San Francisco bridge, <laughs> but you're going to use the, the, the blueprint of the bridge to build your own bridge, right? Totally, right? <laughs> Makes perfect and, sense. And, and then, you know, it's kind of like, so you use that to learn and to guide yourself. And I love that. And that's exactly what it is. You can obviously, I mean, you can copy. Nothing's going to stop you from copying the watch list. And right. to be honest, the fucking watch list is golden. But you know, you know what the problem with this? The watch list is a theoretical watch list. And we are human beings with flaws. I would love to have no emotions and no FOMO and just wait for the perfect light entry. Totally, right? <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, if I follow Alex's watch list and don't enter early, I hardly ever lose. The problem is, like, can't, it's very hard to be able to sit there and do nothing, right? Right, and, exactly. And some, some days the watch list doesn't hit. But you don't lose. It just doesn't get you the, lot, the preferred areas. Right. Right, exactly. And then, you know, and I think to like to add to that point there is like, a, we talk about this a lot, how the tab program has really helped everybody else. And shout out to my tabs. I got ATL trader here and Andrew up in Canada. But they've been my, my strength when it comes to consistency. Because, you know, you, you know, we get into our little group and we go over our watch list. But one thing what we've done um, recently is before the market bell around nine o'clock market time, I get on the, call, on the phone with them and we go through our plans and make sure that we're executing it the right way. So first thing is make sure we got our plan in place, but then we also make sure we're executing after the bell happens. And after we're done trading, you know, thankfully we're trying to get eliminate, eliminate FOMO and zombie hour, but now we have like an after action review. Talk about our trades, talk about what went well, what didn't go so well, what can we do to, to, to improve the next day? So that TAP program has uh, uh, helped me tremendously and I feel that I couldn't be where I am with that right now without a ATL yeah, yeah, Trader yeah, yeah, and Andrew. Yeah. You know what, man? I, I love hearing that because pe people think that they join and they just learn automatically. No, you have to put in work. Yeah. You have to work, put in the work during the trading hours and after the trading hours like you do. <laughs> yes, Same thing absolutely. with school, right? You have mm -hmm. to study and then do homework and do right. projects. Absolutely. And so, guys, guys, I mean, I'm telling you, man, the process works. The missing link is the people like me that break my own rule. You know what I'm saying? If we, if we stick to the process, it works. But like I said, we are humans. We will screw up. And so when you screw up, you have to have the safety equipment in place, such as a car. Why do you have a seatbelt? How many guys crash your car? I haven't crashed. Knock on wood. I don't want to jinx myself, but... Right. <laughs> right? Knock on wood. <laughs> I was like, why, why did I need to wear a seatbelt? <laughs> right? But you know what, man? But the one time you do crash the car, right, that seatbelt will save your yep. freaking life. Exactly. Same thing with hard stops. Same thing with the max day lock. Same thing with the zombie rule. Right. Things like that. Right. Because, because we get away with it, man. You get away with too much stupid stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think, you know, the other thing, uh, the, looking back as far as like what made me to be more confident, not only just joining MIC, but 
what I learned is learning my learning style, my learning ability as an adult learner, because, you know, I'm not like, I see Faye and, and I see everybody else who's doing so well right out the gates. But, you know, I am more of a kinesthetic learner because there's three different learning types. You know, you got the visual learners, you got your auditory learners, and you got people like me who have to do it to learn. So I learned I, I, I well. learned I learned by getting my butt whooped. I'm the horrible, I'm the horrible learner. You don't want to be like me. Go. So I'm just like you. So you know, I know you, I see like you and Alex and Taj like as my parents, and you tell me don't do this. I've been there before, but sometimes I have to learn the hard way. So you know, I've been through the simulator. I don't know how many times after hours and trading the opening over and over again, and using the archives through MIC and going through it all over again. And that's how it's helped me. Like I listen to the, the uh, watch the videos, listen to it, but I really still have to take the action by the simulator I, after hours. That's how I've been really learning and being that's, that's uh, awesome. learning my trust my lines. I, I, I keep telling everybody the same thing, man. Like a football player, he has 12, he only plays on Sunday, but you think right. they're, they're not doing anything on the rest of the week. They're practicing. Yeah, they're, exactly. on, a <laughs> they're on a football simulator. They're right. on a simulator every day. Like, no, they're not play? practicing the game. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing, people. Oh, I don't. I don't want to practice. I don't want to do this. I'm like, if Tom Brady, right now, is throwing the football during the quarantine, right? You should be able to be, you know, doing homework. So absolutely. Let, let me ask you about the accelerator. So yeah, we came out with this course, the the Jumpstart Accelerator. And you 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 you've taken it. You looked at it. And, yeah, I've been it a few times already. Um, loved it because it, it just gives you a lot of nuances that I missed uh, by being all these, these other groups. So, uh, you know, for me to check my, my knowledge uh, on it, I created like a 50, a 50 questionnaire exam on it on myself, right? Oh, wow. So I went through it and make sure that I have hey, a hey, really Alan, good understanding. Talk, maybe, maybe you can share this. <laughs> well, awesome. I shared it. Yeah, I shared it with you guys a while back. But, you know, I yeah. just, just like – it was just a way for me to make sure I check my understanding. So it's not like, yeah, I think I got it. No, I have to double check to make sure what I got because there's so much stuff on it. So yeah, I've been on it too, like three, four different times already through that pro program. And it's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. That, that's, that's exactly right, guys. Sometimes, you know, you, I'm telling you, man, ego is what, what probably made me lose today. Ego to come in thinking I'm going to nail this. I'm going to be the man. I'm going to do all this. And ego prevents me from, going through group camp like you. You right. you did it right, man. You you been a trader a while, but you still went back to the accelerated course multiple times to learn. Right. And so Absolutely. you see guys, I want to tell everybody, man, they, they, take a look at all the successful people out there. Humility. To be to be to be humble enough to say, I don't know everything. I'm gonna go back and learn <laughs> and ask questions. I mean that's the key to life, man. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you, Nelly, uh, what do you do for a day job <laughs> besides trading? Uh, so I was a sales trainer uh, for a telecom company, formerly known as Sprint, which is now T-Mobile. Who's been with there for 15 years? Unfortunately, with the merger that happened uh, with T-Mobile and Sprint, my position was eliminated. So um, I feel like I remember reading through your book, um, uh, one of the books that you actually did with a, another group that was really good that you used to Momo trade with. Trader. Momo yes, Trader. Yes, 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 yes. So you you took a bet on yourself. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm actually have a lot of opportunities to go back to work, but I decided that this is my passion. Like I love getting up at 430 and my wife is fully supported. So now I decided to give that big leap of faith on myself and MIC one full lifetime and Oak Cobra is going to be opening here at the beginning of next month. And this is what I'm going to do a full time now. Oh man. I, I, this is great, man. I, I wish you the best. And I'll, I'll you. give you a little, I'll give you a little bit of advice. So this is please. So when I started where you were, right. Taking a bet on myself. I pretty much had, like, this is my last safety net. Yeah. I have nothing after this. Right. I took my money out of my house. I'm like, dude, if I lose this shit, I'm going bankrupt, right? right. <laughs> and right. so the problem I see now with myself, I, I feel myself getting too loose because the urgency is like, oh, if I lose 10 grand, it's 10 grand. But the problem back then is like, dude, that's a fucking lot of money. That is my rent for, like, months, right? Right. And if, and, and if I'm fucking... If I have a very tight budget, I cannot fucking just think, oh, it's just a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars is fucking that's about food money for the week, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and so a lot of these guys, the problem I, I, I feel myself like I'm trying to figure out how to fix it for myself. It's the fact that you know, man, you gotta take trading more seriously in terms of monetary. Mm -hmm. Because five hundred dollars here, two hundred dollars there adds up significantly. Right. 
You can't just say, oh, the paper cut. Five hundred dollars paper cut. Fuck, right. man. That don't, why don't you paper cut me and give me 500 bucks? <laughs> right, totally. That's, that's a giant paper cut. What's yeah. Like, five reams of like five hundred pieces. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, and so, so my advice to you, when you start this, man, you, you have a good support system, your wife, whatever. And so I have a good friend. His, his name is On. He's a doctor. He trades and he, he has a, uh, a medical clinic and he does surgery. And so he tells his secretary, at 1030, the zombie, pull the fucking plug. <laughs> Do not fucking let me trade. Because this guy, he's a doctor. Obviously, he makes money. Right. You see what I'm saying? And so the problem before he had was the fact that he's too loose. Oh, you lose 10 grand. I will wait another paycheck and refill the account. You know, that, that, that's the problem. It, right. You know, it could be anything. Like, you're a salesperson. You make money. You can put $5,000 in every month if you wanted to if, when you were working, right? Right. And so the urgency for you to, to treat it seriously, it's very limited. So right. I love the fact that you are now all in kind of thing. I want you to make sure that you have a support system that you cannot break. Because Absolutely. human beings love to break a rule, man. I'm telling you, man. I was about mm -hmm. to pull, I'm pulling up other accounts. I'm trying to figure out what this is oh breaking the rule. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so you're sneaking around. You go quiet. You don't tell your tab that you're breaking the mm -hmm. rules. You, and so you must find a way. If you take this seriously, guys, I'll give you an example. Talk to your tab. Instead of talking to your tab on the phone, maybe do a FaceTime call on your iPhone. So the tab okay. is looking at you and making right. sure that you are not doing anything <laughs> behind no, I love the back. That. I love that. And and I'm telling you, this is why the guys are trading at the trading firms in, in New York City, Wall Street. They do well because they're sitting around 20 other guys. Right. They are not fucking around. Absolutely. But we are home making food, walking around. <laughs> yeah, know? absolutely. And, and I think, you know, for me, too, it just like is changing that mindset from this is not a hobby. This is a career now. So I get up. I actually get my clothes ready the night before. I have everything ready. I get up, I treat it like I'm going to work, right? Correct. So I think that's, that's like the big defining uh, factor for me is changing my complete mindset that this is not a job. I'm sorry, this is not a, 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 a hobby. hobby. This is not a joke. This is my career. Not a job, but this is my career. And that's because really helped me change my mindset on that. What, what helped me when I started was the fact that I was like, you know what, man? I, I'm only going to use the money I make in trading to, let's say, pay my bills or to go out. And so... If you have other sources of income, so I'll give you an example. Like today, I lost a chunk of money. If that was before, it's unacceptable. I could never lose that because I couldn't pay my rent. Right, right. And I was like, dude, so each month you got to make the money, put aside to the rent. You know, these are the process. If you treat it like a business, you know, you can't be risking your rent money when you're trading. When you make your money, pull that money aside for the month yep. and leave it there. Right. And then give yourself – so it's called risk management, right? You, It's basically – when you're a kid, you get an allowance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when mm -hmm. we're adults, sometimes we our allowance is too big, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so, cause you have savings, you have your wife working, whatever it may be. And so, so this is what makes people, in my opinion, not successful because it's not because of them. It's because of the they're not necessary. This is a hobby for them. They don't need to make money because they have other sources right. of income. And right. This is what Absolutely. most traders fail, man. So I love the fact that you're. You're treating this like a business. Right. And so as a business, now start putting together a financial plan for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, pre and, and basically, this is, should be the, the way that you pay yourself to pay your bills for you to go out to eat to restaurants. If you're breaking the rules, you should not be going out to restaurants. What is yourself? Things Absolutely. Like that. You, and so you put yourself a budget. You know, treat it like a business. And, and then you'll, you'll notice that, it, hey, man, you, you are now – this is the process, a process yeah. within a process, right? Yeah. And that's what that's what helped me, man. I was, I was like, dude, I'm all in. What? This is. I mean, dude, I couldn't go out. Like, you know what I'm saying? But the problem I have now is like, dude, I've I've been doing this so long. You know, like, fuck. If I lose ten grand, it's like it fucking hurts because for me, the pain is not financial. It's the stupidity of having to tell all the members I lost. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So yeah. everybody has a different type of pain. And, right. you know, which one's worse doesn't matter. Like, for me, like, fuck, man, I'd rather people not know because I'm, like, fucking embarrassed. The embarrassment mm -hmm. is worth – the embarrassment cost me more pain than the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's vice versa, whatever. Some people might, oh, I love pain. I just don't want to lose the money. So whatever it may be, 
you have to put in perspective. So I'm going to go down just like you right now. Tonight, I'm going to go sit down after this and work on a plan. How am I going to stop right. myself from keep breaking this fucking stupid rule? Why, why the fuck am I keep doing right. this? You see what I'm saying? And I have to treat it because, Absolutely. you know, I want, to, I want to do it for myself because of the, the members like yourself so that I can teach them. Things like that. Because you know, yes. if, if, I'm, if I'm here doing stupid shit all the time, I don't do stupid shit all the time. But when I do it, I tell you guys, right? <laughs> so most of the right. time, I'm pretty rock solid. But the problem is, like, I get loosey-goosey when I start making money or whatever the fuck it may be, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's like, and that's what happens, man. That's stupid right. shit that happens. So I'm glad that you guys are learning. You're learning the right way, like you said. Alex is learning the right way. He lost today, but he lost a third of what he made yesterday, right? So things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And so you keep, so that's the secret, man, to keep your fucking losses much smaller than you win. It's tough, but look, hearing what you guys uh, preach about every day, that 30-70 rule, it's like a game changer. For you. I never heard it until I came here. Big difference. And that's the problem I have. I'm like 100, 100. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't show it your trade. I'm, I'm, I'm 100, 200, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! I'm, I'm and, and I'll, double the I'll pass. pretend you didn't say that, okay? Because, <laughs> because, because you know, man, I've I've restricted myself to a small account on purpose. I usually right. trade with a pretty ginormous account, and, and 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 to get back to this, and to be honest, man, I'll be straight honest with you guys. You know, like I trade now more for the passion than the money. I I I put my money away in real estate and all these development stuff where. I don't want to fucking blow up a million dollars. Right. Because I've been there, I've done that, right? I've made my money, i put it away. But small is relative, right? What, what a small account is relative to everybody, right? So <laughs> compared to before. And so when I see these guys making 100 grand all this, I'm like, fuck, that was me. I was making 100 grand every fucking day. I, I remember those. I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were right there with me, right? Yeah. And, and the, back then, I was very quiet about it. I didn't brag about it. You know what I'm saying? It's because I was hungry. I was trying to build my bankroll and do all this stuff. I was trained the right way. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, the moment I fucking start being arrogant and start buying shit and thinking the best, I'm going to lose it all. <laughs> right. And, and so, so now I've restricted myself to a smallish account. You know, it's all relative what small means. But, and so like a $10,000 loss, is like, fuck, it, it, when I think about it, it's still a lot of fucking money, man. It is. But in the grand scheme, but you still say it's all relative. And, and I'm a cheap guy. That, dude, this is a $10 shirt. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's what Alex told us. That's, why, that's what he said. <laughs> The most, expensive thing was for something. <laughs> Dude, the, the most expensive thing is this hat, man, because I, I paid money to it, uh, put this, my investing club thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. I have and to so, do that to the Yankees hat. <laughs> so, guys, there's a lot of people out there like yourself, and there's a lot of people out there like myself. I'm treating this sometimes too much like a hobby, and that's what's killing me sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm like, this is fucking fun. Let me see if I can fucking talk to this shit and ride it all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Versus like, why don't I just make the meat and get the fuck out? Yeah, it's absolutely. Absolutely. Every day, I'm telling you, I'm up. But it's never enough. Because it's yeah. like, I don't have the plan. So you, so, so I love the fact that you're going through what I went through. And so you have to understand, dude, it's never enough. You have to get out when you can. Overtrading yep. is the fucking curse. Right. You yeah, should absolutely. never, ever, you should always have a max loss. And the max loss you should have is always 50% lower than what you want to lose. Mm -hmm. I'm telling mm -hmm. you right now, because it's, it's going to take you time to exit the play and all this stuff. Yep, absolutely. And that's why I love these IG lives. Every time I go for a run, that's what I'm listening to, is you talk and, and giving these little nuggets uh, and apply to my business plan as a day trader now. Correct, so guys. Appreciate so it. This, Thank you so much. I, I, you, you've helped me, man. I'm seriously, man. I'm looking at myself now like, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck am I doing wrong? And, and you're right, man. You, I was treating this shit now like a hobby and not yeah. like, uh, like I used to be. Like a serious yeah. fucking career. Yep. Because I don't need it, but the same thing is like it's fucking like stupid. So I'm going to go back <laughs> and make a fucking plan for myself. Awesome. And, and, and hey, I, I thank you. See, these things help me, man. <laughs> we, we grow every day, my friend. Absolutely. We grow day Perfect. every day. <laughs> well, listen, uh, listen, Val. I, I just got to say to you, uh, I don't get like starstruck, but because I've been following you for so long, you are like my Michael Jordan. <laughs> so I am like excited just to be here at all. I, 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 am, to you. I am the five foot tall Michael Jordan. <laughs> right. <laughs> Appreciate it so much. Small stature, big in heart. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks, my friend. Appreciate right, you coming on. All right. Yeah, have a good day.
Well, guys, I hope you learned something. I, I certainly learned something. This was, this was, dude, every single IG Live is unexpected, guys. I didn't expect him to say what he said. I didn't expect any of this stuff. I didn't expect myself to be, to be fucking aware of what my issues are currently. Like I said, man, you can be the best person, Michael Jordan, whatever, but after winning six rings, Michael Jordan got bored. What the fuck is he doing now? So that's, that's what I did, man. I got so bored. I <clears throat> started MIC to teach people. And so I kind of lost my passion for trading because it's the same old thing, right? So then I started doing, like, putting money somewhere else, more exciting. I was like, dude, I don't want to do anything except trade. And I traded for so long. I want to do real estate and all this stuff. But at the same day, at the end of the day, I, love, I came back. I love what I'm doing, guys. And so treat this not like a hobby. That, that's what it is, man. And anything you want to be successful in life, guys, I want to leave this like this. Anything you want to be successful in life. Relationships, friendships, business, even hobbies. Treat it with respect. Serious. Take it seriously. Don't say, hey, I don't give a fuck about this. Treat it seriously because it's all about mindset, man. If I wake up thinking, oh, what's 10000 What's 200 bucks? Paper cut, paper cut. You will get paper cut to death. Okay? Treat everything fucking seriously. And that's the fucking lesson that I need to learn and you guys learn too. I'll see you guys back online, man. Thanks, guys.